Hello and welcome to Pooch with Style. I'm your host, Julie Lascano. The topic of today's show is dogs and healthy eating. But before we get started, I'd like to say hello to my co-host, James Kelly from Aspects of Writing. Hello, Julie. And if you're just tuning in, you're listening to Pooch with Style with me, your host, Julie Lascano, right here on KLAV 1230 on the AM dial in Las Vegas. Or on your computer, you can find us live on the internet at klav1230am.com. Uh, James, would you like to tell us, uh, your listeners, where they can uh, see us live? Yes, you can go to youtube.com forward slash aspects of writing, that's all one word, and click on the featured button. And again, our topic today is dogs and healthy eating. As we go along, if you have any questions, please call us at locally at 702-731-1230, or if you are out of this area code, you can reach us at 1-866-820-5528. And let's get right into our topic, an interesting one at that, dogs and healthy eating. And dogs are one of the oldest domesticated animals. We're not sure when people first lured wolves to come in and sit by uh, their fire or why. But we do know that from such beginnings came one of the most unique animal-human symbiotic (laughs) relationships in the world. (laughs) Close enough, right? Yes. Over the centuries, dogs have been modified in so many ways to meet human desires that they no longer even remotely resemble their wild relatives. Despite the variations in size, appearance, and temperament, all canines share the same basic nutritional requirements. And this article will give uh, you some ideas on what to feed your dog uh, to maintain good health. Uh, We have essentials. Uh, Dogs are... Essentially carnivores, their main source of energy should be supplied from protein derived from meat, whether beef, chicken, fish, or other animal. And the main ingredient in any dog's diet should be a meat source, although some vegetable fibers are are welcome in the dog's diet. They're not as necessarily and certainly not as palatable. Uh, Meat can be raw as long as it's fresh, and there's no necessity to cook it. If the meat is not safe for humans to consume, it basically is not safe for a dog to eat. Yeah, and one of the benefits um, is, what is the benefits of protein? Um, Well, the benefits of feeding protein, uh, a, a protein diet based on animal flesh are many. You get a shiny coat well-fleshed in ribs, strong muscles, solid bones and teeth, and sharp eyes are all outward signs of good health in your dog. Uh, Bag dog food is perfectly acceptable as long as there is quality protein supplied from meat sources. And what about the significance of protein as, as, as humans? It's essential in our diet, but what about in our dogs? The significance, basically, of a high-protein diet cannot be overstated. A dog's body is made uh, to digest protein. His entire body is developed for eating meat, uh, from his teeth to his stomach. A dog's biology is that of a carnivorous animal. Feeding a dog properly is hugely important to their well-being and overall health. Uh, Some people who choose the vegetarian lifestyle want to impose this diet on their, be- on their pets, which can actually be detrimental to a dog's health. Uh, these animals developed in nature on a diet of pure protein, and we can modify the protein source, but being too strict with a dog's diet, trying to keep it free from animal flesh, can have serious uh, health consequences. What is the uh, misconception about what we feed our dogs? Well, one of the common misconceptions is that dogs need vegetables. They do not. The, the reason that dogs and wolves eat grass or other plant material on occasion is to cause them to vomit and clean out their digestive system. If a dog's eating grass, he's sick to his stomach and is working on, on uh, providing a natural solution. I often wondered why at times Boogie, my dog, would eat grass. I'd watch him eating grass, not, obviously not, not frequently, but every now and again, and I, under, I, I did wonder why. And um, in nature, a carnivore that eats plants is doing so to cause itself to void by vomiting and passing feces, not because they enjoy the taste of plants or prefer them to eat. In general, it's not a good idea to feed a dog uh, table scraps, by the way. (laughs) (laughs) The type of dog um, food include processed and commercially available or natural meat sources. 
the most obvious and most common type of dog food is the kind that can be purchased at the store. Most dog foods come nutritionally complete and nothing needs to be added to support optimal health in your dog. Is it possible, Julie, to overfeed your dogs? Uh, well, first of all, we should always read the label and follow the feeding instructions. But to answer your question, yes, you can overfeed your dog, especially with fat. Too much fat intake can actually kill your dog by causing intestinal implosion. A good rule of thumb is to always feed approximately one pound of meat per 10 pounds of your dog's uh, weight. Okay, what shouldn't we feed our dogs? Uh, last week you mentioned that um, at times that you were tempted to feed Boogie um, what you're eating. Right. Well, while you may think it's harmless to feed your dog the same foods you eat, what you eat isn't necessarily safe for your pooch. You can expose your dog to foods that can cause illness and even death. Uh, to provide your dog with a healthy and safe feeding environment in general, you should avoid feeding your dog human foods. I can tell you that I uh, personally, I, I have been guilty of giving Boogie chicken bones, uh, but because when one doesn't know any better, basically that's what you do you feed them what you feed them the wrong thing and I've, I've been guilty of it many times it's tempting to give your dog a bone from a steak or other meat products such as pork even feeding your dog a raw bone a bone that isn't been cooked can potentially contaminate your dog with salmonella and E. coli uh, cooked bones can crack or splinter and according to the St. Uh, Lucia Animal Protection Society bones that splinter can lead to intestinal obstructions that will need surgery to repair. Giving bones to your dog can also cause uh, tooth damage, uh, obstructions in the throat, and possible intestinal perforation. Okay, what about candy? Uh, we were talking about one show where we shouldn't feed the dogs chocolate. Right. Again, this is something that, though in, in very tiny pieces, I'm guilty of having given my my boogie something that I shouldn't for no other reason than that, that I simply wasn't educated as to what I can and cannot feed him. Uh, while humans can digest chocolate, dogs lack this ability due to the chemical, f what is that? Um, where are we? Theobromine. Ah, I can't even pronounce that. <laughs> <laughs> Theobromine is a diuretic for dogs. Chocolate indigestion can cause excessive urination in dogs. Chocolate can also cause an increased heart rate, seizures, vomiting, and diarrhea in dogs. Uh, darker chocolate contains higher concentrations of theobromine. The slightest indigestion or ingestion of Chocolate requires immediate medical attention from your veterinarian since your dog can die from eating chocolate. And I did know that, by Who the knew? way. Yeah. yeah, see, we don't, there's so much that we just, we're not educated and we give our dogs what we shouldn't. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, how about fruit? Fruit comes to mind. Uh, in, is it something that we should also stay away from, giving them fruit? It's actually, uh, it is actually. Fruits uh, such as grapes and raisins can poison your dog. These fruits can cause kidney damage. As little as one third of an ounce of grapes per body, or per pound of body weight, can cause damage to your dog, according to Pet Education. Uh, acids found in citrus fruits can cause vomiting. Seeds found in fruits can also cause complications. Peach and avocado pits can obstruct your dog's intestinal tract. Well, I don't know why would we give somebody avocado pits, but anyway. <laughs> Um, dogs should also avoid apple seeds, cherry pits, and apricot pits. Hmm. Other food to avoid, other dangerous foods to avoid include ham, onions, dairy products. Ham has a high concentration of salt. I've been giving, I've been guilty of that too. And when fed to your dog, your pet can drink massive quantities of water to combat the saltiness. This can cause bloat a condition that causes uh, gas bloating. Your dog's stomach can twist, resulting in death, states the St. Lucia Animal Protection Society. Dogs can have an intolerance to lactose found in dairy products. Ingesting dairy such as milk can cause diarrhea and vomiting. Onions contain the chemical thiosulfate. Thiosulfate <laughs> affects red blood cells, leading to anemia. 
Uh, it's amazing that Boogie's uh, even alive. I mean, really, I, I've given him ice cream, <laughs> and this is why it's so incredibly important to educate ourselves because our animals, uh, to to some people like myself, they are our whole life. So we have to take care of them and read about what we can and cannot give them. We always say they are so much like people, and in reality they are, and that's why, like people, we need to do our research as if they were our, our little children. Uh, you're listening to Pooch with Style with me, your host, Julie Lascano, and my co-host, James Kelly, right here on KLAV here in Las Vegas, Nevada. And now for a few fun facts. Um, James, would you like to take the first one? Sure. The name of the dog on the Cracker Jacks box is Bingo. And the Taco Bell Chihuahua is a rescue dog named Gidget. The first dogs were self-domesticated wolves, which at least 12,000 years ago became attracted to the first sites of permanent human habitation. Wow. Dash hounds were bred to fight badgers in their dens. Lykey, a Russian stray, was the first living mammal to orbit the Earth in the Soviet Sputnik spacecraft in 1957. Though she died in space, her daughter Pushnika had four puppies with President John F. Kennedy's terrier, Charlie. Oh, that's oh, neat. That's cute. good news. Yeah. <laughs> and did you know that Dalmatians are completely white at birth? Oh, wow. That's a good one. Uh, the term dog days of summer was coined by the ancient Greeks and Romans to describe the hottest days of summer that coincided with the rising of the dog star Sirius. Uh, let's see. I have another one here that I want to go through. <laughs> Alexander the Great is said to have founded and named a city Paredes in memory of his dog. In ancient Greece, kennels of dogs were kept at the sanctuary of Asclepius at... <laughs> <laughs> sure. Why do I pick these words? Dogs were... Yeah, okay. <laughs> Dogs were frequently sacrificed there because they were plentiful, inexpensive, and easy to control. During the July 25th celebration of the Canofintis, the massacre of dogs, dog sacrifices were performed to appease the ancestors of Apollo's son, Linos, who was devoured by dogs. And one more. Dog trainers in ancient China were held in high esteem. A great deal of dog domestication also took place in China, especially dwarfing and miniaturization. Okay. So, Julie. And we're going to, um, let's go to some well, of Well, you better watch out for those <laughs> faux pas with four paws and get it. It's, it's time for the Pooch News. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Ryan. Uh, Las Vegas is a popular vacation spot for adult, adult dogs throughout the United States, and according to the Las Vegas Review Journal, it's a great getaway for your pet, too. Eight Caesars Entertainment Las Vegas Resorts Welcome Dogs reports the Review Journal. Caesars Palace, Paris Las Vegas, Planet Hollywood Resort, Harris Las Vegas, the Flamingo, Bally's, and the Rio, and the Imperial Palace all allow dogs meeting their outline specifications in their pet stay accommodation. These resorts have pet-friendly um, designated floors, and dogs staying in the hotels are allowed to walk through the designated common areas while on a leash and accompanied by their owners. Dogs must be 50 pounds or less and be present at, a time, at the time of check-in. It is a demand brought to us from our customers, says Marianne Dennis, Vice President of the Regional Teleservices for Caesars Entertainment Las Vegas Resorts. Our pets have become such a big part of our families. It's a unique, o unique opportunity to travel with your pets. Other Las Vegas locations allowing pets include Trump International Hotel and Tower, Lowe's Las Vegas, and Mandalay Bay. Restaurants are also becoming dog-friendly in Las Vegas. These restaurants allow patrons to bring their pooches for outdoor dining experiences. Which eateries are offering doggy bags? Capriati. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. Very good pun there, Julie. Uh, Capriati San <laughs> Sandwich Shop, The Egg and I. I didn't know that about The Egg and I. Uh, In-N-Out Burger, Sonic, Chipotle, Baja Fresh Mexican Grill, 
and it's a Grand Cafe, uh, Grand Coffee House, reports the Review Journal. And no trip to Las Vegas is complete without some serious shopping time. Thankfully, all common areas in the Town Square shopping district are dog-friendly. The area is equipped with waste removal bags and doggy bars, oriented drinking fountains created specifically for pampered pooches. Many Town Square merchants even allow dogs within their businesses. Pet-friendly stores include BB, Brighton Collectibles, Banana Republic, Caché, Aldo, and what is that one? Guest, <laughs> Scenario, uh, Juicy Couture, that. and Quicksilver. Okay. I just realized, did we skip, or did I skip mm-hmm. over our, our dog safety tips? Yes, we did. <laughs> no wonder I was all thrown off. Uh, Let's get yes, into our dog safety tips now. Um, we've mentioned this before, but it's very important to always keep this in mind. Even if it's only for 10 minutes, don't leave your dog in your car. Aside from being against the law in many states, even a few moments in the heat will turn your car into an oven. This can lead to dehydration, uh, brain damage, or even death. And even cracking the car window will not be enough to combat summer heat. You can visit the My Dog is Cool website to see a chart on how fast your car can become overheated. You will be surprised at the results. It literally can happen within minutes. Literally. Yeah. Yeah. Has anyone ever asked you about uh, shaving your dog in the summertime? Because often, you know, owners will shave their dogs down during the summer thinking this will keep them cool. Well, I, I actually had often wondered and later found out that, ironically, shaving down a dog inhibits their ability to deal with the temperature change. So keep your dogs well-groomed by removing all its dead undercoat hair. But remember not to shave them down in order to help them tolerate the summer sun. Your dog's skin will also be at risk from the sun. So sunscreen is recommended. Make sure you use a sunscreen that is specifically made for your dog. A lot of dog owners don't realize that there is dog sunscreen. Dogs that are shaved have short white fur or are hairless, um, most at risk of sun damage. Other areas of sensitivity are their noses and the tips of their ears. You know, a few weeks ago we mentioned the fact about their paws and the possibility of sun damage. Yeah, the the black top s- street asphalt gets hot, very hot. You should all you should walk your pet on the grass. There's not a lot of grass here no, in Nevada, no. but. Um, or on the sidewalk instead of on the street. The hot black roads can hurt their paws. Uh, On days that your dog spends a lot of time outside, you'll want to check the dog's paws for sun damage and his fur for ticks. When checking for ticks, make sure you look under the tail, on their stomach, and in their ears, and between their toes. Well, you know, the fortunate thing is in Las Vegas, we don't have to deal too much with ticks. Um, but when it comes to what you're talking about with the paws, yeah. you know, I'll, I guess people don't understand that the dog perspires through their paws. Right. So that's why that can really do damage to the paws. Very true. Some simple training and safety devices can ease your mind and protect your dog this summer. For example, make sure to give your dog treat your dog's treats and praise in order to posit- positively reinforce being handled and having his fur and paws looked at. Practice this often so that your dog likes being handled. If you want to use doggy sunscreen on your pu- on your pup, put it on while your dog is playing ball with you or doing another enjoyable activity so that your dog positively associates sunscreen application with good times. And last but certainly not least, always have plen- plenty of water available for your dog. This will ensure that you keep cool and hydrated which in turn will keep them healthy and happy this as we near the end of summer you are listening to pooch with style your host julie lascano and my co-host james kelly right here on klav 1230 on the am dial or klav1230am.com on your computer we also stream live on google uh, plus YouTube, WordPress, and Facebook. And where else can they see us, James? Well, normally when Tito's here, they can see us on Tumblr, <laughs> Blogger. But since I'm operating the camera today, <laughs> you just pretty much named it. <laughs> okay. And now our pooch product of the month uh, with James. Okay. Last month we prom- uh, promoted dog safety and had our, is that Corgo? Uh, auto zip line. Kurgo, yeah. Oh, yeah. Kurgo auto zip line, which is a safety car harness for your pets, which I need to get one of those. Um, through the month of August, we will be promoting our 
IGO2 Traveler Roller Backpack, which looks so cool because it's got a handle, and yet you can also use it with the rollers. And the IGO2 is a roller bag. It's a backpack, a car seat, a booster, and tote, all in one. And even it is even approved as a carry-on for most airlines. Our Traveler model measures 17 inches high and 12 to 16 inches wide and 11.5 and inches deep and holds up to 20 pounds. Um, use the FUPI or UPI, I'm sorry, <laughs> F-U-P-I, <laughs> UPI, uh, F-U-P-I for Close Upon Pets as your coupon code for the 15% discount. Okay. Um, dog food recipes. Uh, the best dog doggy biscuits. This recipe received a four and a half star rating. Okay. And the prep time um, is approximately 10 minutes, and the cook time is 25 minutes, and it should be ready in <laughs> 35 okay. minutes. And the ingredients, two cups of whole wheat flour, one cup of cornmeal, one tablespoon of salt, a third cup of vegetable oil, one egg, one cup of water. And the directions, preheat the oven to 350 degrees uh, Fahrenheit. Uh, grease a cookie sheet in a large bowl. Stir together the whole wheat flour, cornmeal, and salt. Mix in the oil, egg, and water to make a soft dough that's not too sticky. You may add more flour if needed. Roll table teaspoons of dough into balls and place on the prepared cookie sheet. Flatten slightly. And bake for 20 to 25 minutes in the preheated oven until nicely browned and firm. Cool completely, then store in an airtight container. Uh, we hope your best friend enjoys this tasty dog food recipe. Now, Julie, on your website, do you list any of these recipes, or will you be in the future? Yeah, we're actually going to be listing the, the recipes, and we are also going to be... Um, the articles that, that we read on, on the radio show, mm -hmm. there will also be links. And pretty much anything that we discuss on the radio show is going to be on our website. That's poochwithstyle.com. And that's poochwithstyle.com. Okay. You could get, go on to our site for any information. Our blogs, uh, we're, we're, we have a lot of um, articles, blog articles that we're, we're beginning to write. And so um, shortly you'll start seeing our blog rolling. Well, you know, one of the things you mentioned earlier as well was when we were talking about what to feed our dogs. And I think I shared with you that I had a dog that lived 19 years old. Right. And the, uh, the only thing I did feed him that was human, I always bought, you know, canned dog food or, or dried dog food. I did give him french fries. That's the only <laughs> thing. And oddly enough, the new dog I have, which I do remember her name today, which is Angel, um, that's the only bad habit <laughs> right, I have Angel. with her is I give Angel french fries. Beyond that, though, she gets no human food. Okay. I am like, I probably eat potato every day, potato, baked potato or a french fry. I love potatoes. Yeah. So I do the same thing. I, I'm guilty of, of giving Boogie. I just, yesterday I gave him french fries. Me, me as well. But the <laughs> thing is, is that you did talk about in here where that's the one thing it's safe to give the pets is fresh vegetables. Well, I don't know well, if you would consider <laughs> fresh yeah. because it is deep fried, but I figure if, if we have to give them something, why not a vegetable? Right. <laughs> <laughs> it's not chocolate. And I hope she lives to be at least 19 years old, like my right. past dog. So. Right, that's true. Um, next week, we're going to return with a live show and with a new topic. Um, you can find links and information about all my guests on the Pooch with Style website at www.poochwithstyle.com. Every Sunday, Pooch with Style will broadcast live at 6 p.m. Pacific Standard Time here on KLAV, KLAV and on the Internet. On the, I can't speak. And on the internet at www.klav1230am.com. Um, you know, when we were talking about um, what we give our dogs, I, I've been guilty. Every time I research something and I, and I look in at, at what we should and shouldn't give them, I feel terrible. Why? Because I've probably given Give them him up. everything I shouldn't, and I'm just shocked that he's alive. <laughs> and you know what? This is interesting, too. And I had an aunt who had eight poodles, and she and my uncle would load those poodles up in the car and take them down to the ice cream stand 
at least twice a week <laughs> and get them ice cream cones. I kid you not. Yeah. And then you're you're telling us tonight that's not good. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I I don't know how many times I've given him um, uh, ice cream and and once the I mean the min and and also um, ham, you know. I, I know. I wouldn't think about ham being bad. Well, you know, after you read about it with the salt, I'm like, yeah, it kind of makes sense. It, it just kind of, at the end of the day, it kind of makes yeah. sense when you start reading all these stuff. But but there are a lot of foods that you just, uh, you figure you're eating it, it's okay. You yeah. know? When in reality, it just isn't. And it's probably not good for us either. <laughs> and it's probably not. I mean, I, 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 it's as simple as that because, I mean, ice cream... Well, everything in excess, it's just not good for us. Right. You know? Yeah. I mean, how good is ham and French fries and <laughs> all that stuff, you know? So, um, for more information on dog tips, dog safety, and dog products, you can go to your computer, log on to poochwithstyle.com. Please sign on our newsletter while visiting the Pooch with Style website. You can post questions or comments on our blog page as well. Or email us directly at contact us at poochwithstyle.com. Thank you for listening to Pooch with Style right here on KLAV. Um, we rebroadcast on VegasAllNetRadio.com at 5 uh, Pacific Standard Time. You can also view us on video here in the studio at KLAV on YouTube immediately after this broadcast. Just go um, to YouTube and enter Aspects of Writing with uh, James Kelly. This is your host, uh, Julie Lascano, reminding you to keep your dog safe and happy. And thank you, James. Thank you, Julie. Thanks, Ryan. Thanks, Ryan.